Good morning and welcome to another Zero to 60. Today I'm going to give you a quick run through my new dash cam, which is the Acumen XR10, and also show you the install on the 5 Series and how it turned out, because it was pretty easy really. Right, let's get to it. Now, for the install, I just watched the video on the Acumen website about their install. The only thing I had to do differently is they installed it on a two-door Honda, I think it was a, it was a Civic or an Accord. Um, it's obviously quite a smallish car, um, relatively easy to hide all the wires which was something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that all the wires were hidden. So when I went to do mine, I was originally following their route of running the, the wires from out of the camera, um, along the top of the hood lining, down the left-hand side A-pillar, and then along the kick panels and into the boot. As I got relatively a long way through the job, through the install, I realized that the because of the size of the 5 Series and that I wanted the wires to be completely hidden, the reversing camera wasn't going to be the wire for the reversing camera wasn't going to be long enough to to make it all the way to the back of the car. So I ended up going, as you can see, the power cable and the rear cam go straight out of the dash cam. The power cable still follows the same route that Acumen ran theirs, which goes to the left hand side A pillar, down to the left hand kick panel, up behind the glove box, and then actually in behind the dashboard, behind the um, behind the air con behind the air conditioning control unit and then it comes out it comes out just at the at the cup holders there and runs to the cigarette lighter but the rear view camera that goes up and then runs towards the driver's side a pillar and then rather than going down I just ran it along the hood lining and ran it all the way to the back of the car down the C pillar run it down the C-pillar and then into the boot following all the power cables for the car and then actually found this wiring harness on the inside there obviously all of this all of the interior stuff was removed and was actually able to poke it through this conduit so it completely follows all of this and then it runs through the inside of the inside of the boot skin the bootless skin up here and then the wire comes out right next to the, um, the license plate light. And then that's the camera there. It wasn't a hard install. It was just time consuming to make sure it was all done properly. And before I actually started, I powered it up just inside the car before actually installing everything, make sure the front camera works, the rear camera works, and everything works as it should before I started pulling my car apart. But I was pretty happy with the outcome. It's all pretty well, pretty tidy now, and no one really even notices it. For the power situation, I also run a, a Bluetooth FM modulator, and I also, also like having USB chargers so I can charge my iPhone or, you know, cameras or power banks or whatever needs to be charged whilst on the move. So I got a multi-port cigarette lighter adapter. That's actually what you can see plugged into here. That runs into the in behind the dashboard, and that's where everything else is plugged in. So now everything's completely hidden. All of those three components are zip-tied into the into the cigarette adapter. So they can't rattle out or come loose if you hit a bump or whatever. It's all nice and safe, and everything's getting all the right power that it should. The reason I wanted to buy one of these is because I drove Andrews McGann and I really liked having the wide angle view at the back of the car. So when I set this one up, I wanted to make sure I can still get that view, but with this car, it's got, it's got reversing sensors in the bumpers, but it doesn't have a rear view camera. So I actually wanted to use the, I wanted to use the camera for the back also as a reversing camera. So that's why it's sort of pointing at a 45 degrees angle down towards the road. And how it's set up that way is because it's such a wide an angle lens, that's what it's actually wide enough to get all of the vehicle behind you at the traffic light so you can still see their number plate and quite often who's the driver. But when I'm reversing, you can scroll down the image like that and look directly behind the car so you can see exactly how you're going if you're gonna run over anything. It's pretty good. In terms of value, it's a little bit more expensive than Andrew's ultra cheap Johnson, but it's still not an expensive dual camera dash cam. One thing that you notice immediately, as soon as this one powered up, 
is that it boots quicker than Andrew's. The resolution of the screen is much, much clearer. And also the cameras, which I've also mentioned in my previous video, is that the rear camera is true 1080p and you can tell straight away. So even in daylight, it's, it's actually getting a little bit dark now. Um, but the picture is, as you can see, it's perfect. And the low light levels of these cameras are phenomenal. Like they're better than the naked eye. But when you're driving through a, when you're driving through a remote or a rural area where there's no buildings, just trees, no street lights or cars or anything around, just the light that's being emitted from the tail lights actually illuminates the road a little bit. Whereas, so you can actually see that in the rear view mirror, in the rear view camera. But if you look at any of the actual mirrors, it's just complete darkness. So it's actually better than the eyes. It's in terms of usability, it's incredibly easy. As soon as you start the car up, dash cam turns on and starts recording. If you want, you can just hit the record button and it will stop recording and then you can just record what you want to record. But obviously I've got it set up as a, as a proper dash cam. So as soon as you start the car up, it starts recording. A huge thing compared to, again, Andrew's cheap Johnson is when you start his up, it reverts to the front camera every time and then you've got to configure it to get to the right camera so you can use it as a rear view mirror. This one, it boots up where you left it. And because I always use it as a rear view camera, every time I start the car up, it's displaying the rear view camera, which is perfect for me. And although it doesn't sound like much, when you drive a car like that, it is annoying every time you get in it. You've got to go through the settings and get to the right camera. So again, this one always boots up onto the rear view camera, but there are different ways you can have the cameras laid out if you want. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of swiping it. So there it goes to picture in picture. So that's the rear view camera look, looking downwards and it's got the front camera at the top there. A split screen, front and rear. I guess that way you know that both cameras are working. And then that's the front camera. And again, because they are wide angle lenses and it does capture the entire image, it's just a very thin monitor. You can scroll through the image and sort of look at where you want to look. But again, I just want it on the rear view camera, so that's how I leave it. So as you tap it once, you, you can basically change everything you want there. Uh, you've got the home screen, the playback button, the brightness, start and stop recording, take a picture if you want, a still picture. Uh, microphones, you can turn the sound recording on and off and you can lock a file if something's happened. Um, but didn't cause an accident, so you haven't slammed the brakes on, so it won't lock the file. If you just see something happening in front or behind you, you can hit lock and then that will not get recorded over. But it is a proper dash cam, so it does have loop recording. So, I mean, the memory card doesn't, you never have to take the memory card out and clean it or whatever. It just records over itself. But if you lock the file or if you have an accident, that file is locked and it will not become, it will not get recorded over. So go into the settings, you click the home button there. Obviously, again, just more options for the ones that are up on the main screen. You can also format the card from here as well if you need to wipe it for whatever reason. So you go into the settings and here's where you can sort of set it up to how you like it. So you can choose to record 1080 or 720 high res image, so I leave it on 1080. You can choose how long you want the clips to be, uh, how long you want the loop clips to be. One, two or three minutes. I just go three minutes, just a little bit longer for whatever reason. Um, you can turn sound on and off. As I'll well turn that on. Uh, you can have it so that it automatically turns off the screen, clock settings, that's obviously pretty self-explanatory. Language, I think there's nine different languages to choose from. It's got a screensaver mode. The protection level, that is regarding its internal G-sensor. I have it on high. And basically, because it is a proper dash cam, if you have an accident, it will, the G-sensor recognizes it and then locks the file so that it won't get lost later on. It's also got parking monitoring. I have that on high as well. And basically when the car's left alone and that's on, as you turn the car off and leave it, if it experiences, if the G sensor recognizes anything while the camera's off, it quickly boots up and starts recording. I think it might be 10 seconds that it records for. And the purpose of that is if you, if somebody runs into you uh, in a car park or something, it will then start recording and get them as they're driving away. It's also got motion detection, uh, which can be used similar to the parking mode, but uses motion rather than the G-sensor. Volume, it's surprisingly loud actually for just one little speaker on this unit, so I actually have it right on one bar. Uh, you can format, format the SD card from here as well, it shows you what, fir what firmware is currently install installed on the unit. 
and you can reset to all default settings as well. So it's all very easy to use. If something does happen, you can also view all the files that are currently on the card without having to pull the card out and put it in a computer, which is pretty handy. So here you can see, these are just all the, the normal recording files that, that it's been through. You can click on one. And there it is. Oh, the only thing is, because obviously you've got this wide uh, monitor that's very shallow, it does distort the image. So that's not, if you put that on a computer, that's not how it looks. In fact, I'll show you what it looks like. But that's just how it displays here. You can go back and delete the files if you need to or whatever, all from, all from the camera. The next one are the files that have been locked. So as I was explaining the locked files before, that's all of these. If anything has happened, it locks the file or if I manually hit the lock button to lock it, that all goes into here and then they will not get recorded over. That one there is any still images that gets taken. That's that one just before. This one is the parking mode. So while it's in the parking mode, all the files that it records goes into that section. And if you want to view just the rear camera, you press that one once. And that's all the rear camera videos. Hit it again, and then it's the front camera videos. So it's all pretty self-explanatory, pretty, pretty easy to pretty easy to use. You don't have to be a genius to work it. And that's one thing I really like about it. It's just been very easy to set up and easy to use. The only thing that wasn't perfect is because of the big 5 Series mirror that I've got in this car. As you can see there, although it's a massive screen on most cars, it covers the mirror completely hiding the standard mirror so you can't see it all. These big 5 Series ones, you can see how deep they are. So they've got a lot of sensors for the car in them. This one doesn't quite cover it. And you can just see a little bit of the mirror there. But initially I thought that was going to be an issue. However, after driving the car just... After driving the car for... Well, one day, you don't even notice the original mirror anymore. It just... It, it does hide it enough, so... It wasn't as much of an issue as I thought it was going to be. For people that don't like the digital rear view mirror, um, I admit initially it doesn't feel very natural because you go from having what you would normally see in a mirror, just a very small image, to having a completely wide angle view of everything that's going on behind you. Uh, you can just hit that button once and it reverts back to a, a standard mirror and then it's, yeah, it's like you haven't got a screen or a dash cam at all. But one of the reasons I wanted these is to have that perfect view out the back and also the, the reverse cam. And that's about all there is to it. It's a very simple unit to use and I'm very happy with it. I'll put some demo footage up now so you can actually see the clarity. Again, the, the low light footage is just, it's so good. But if you've got any other questions about the mirror or the cameras or anything at all, then uh, let me know. Oh, you might wanna know from where I put the rear view camera, if it's waterproof. Obviously it's gonna get wet and yes it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, do let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.